behind me, a timer for three minutes, and we are going to, um, oh, I'm going to choose at random uh, who is going to go first. And each candidate has three minutes uh, to make their opening statement. So what is that? And finally, last but not least, Freddie from uh, UKIP. I'm a retired teacher, mathematician, physicist, and accountant. First class qualifications in each. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Manufacturing and exporting business, businesses were my thing. I'm now UKIP's regional chairman for London. I'm here to save Bexley from the misguided. Recently, I've been asked, isn't UKIP's job done? My reply, no. While without us, there would have been no referendum at all, let alone a successful vote to leave the EU, UKIP's barely started on Britain's fresh journey to freedom. Are we still a member of the EU? Yes, we are. All my mainstream opponents here had campaigned to keep us trapped in the EU. Have we taken control of our borders to ensure that people who immigrate to Britain are of long-term benefit to this country? No, we have not. More than three and a half million came here to stay since 2010, for over five years of which James had responsibility for either security or immigration, or both. Fewer than half that number left Britain. England's now the fourth most densely populated large country in the world. And by every metric, money, education, earning power, skills, experience, qualifications, those quitting are of a very different caliber from those coming in. And I speak as a proud first-generation immigrant myself of mixed race. I would not have come to the broken Britain of today. UKIP has become the secret policy unit for an otherwise out-of-touch Conservative Party, with almost every UKIP policy becoming, sometimes too late, a Tory one. But Theresa May doesn't deliver on them. She just talks a good talk. She claimed to be tough on crime and then wasn't. She claimed she would slash immigration and then didn't. It climbed to absolutely record levels. She has a track record of rank dishonesty, claiming five times that there was not going to be a snap general election. Well, what are we in now? As to Labour, which has each time left the country bankrupt, led by an IRA-loving, Hamas-loving, Hezbollah-loving, England-hating, misguided loon who wants the Falklands ceded to Australia. And furthermore, he believes the last terror attacks were in Liverpool and not in London. And further, his great friend, the racist shadow home secretary, who can't do basic maths, wants to pay policemen 2p an hour, and a Marxist shadow chancellor with a very strange choice of friends. Now, you'd have to be nuts as they are to let them take control of the world's fifth most powerful economy. Can parties who betrayed this country, who conspired to have us ruled in perpe perpetuity by a foreign power, be trusted to govern in the interests of the British people ever again? No. A vote for UKIP is a vote for Britain as a successful, innovative, agile beacon of hope in an unpredictable and dangerous world. Thank you. Um, the first one that we're going to talk about. So we've, we obviously have talked about tonight that, um, controversially maybe, but or, tonight is organised by uh, Churches Together in Sidcup. And whether you are a person of faith or not, um, we all live by certain morals and values. And one of those is trust. So the opening question, this is the one I want to uh, pose to you, is how will each of you as candidates be held accountable uh, for your specific promises? So how will you as candidates be held accountable for um, your specific promises uh, that you will make tonight um, and will hopefully carry forward into uh, office if you were to get there. So we're going to go uh, to... Uh, I'm an atheist, but that doesn't make my conscience any inferior to anyone else's. Um, one, UKIP's ref policy on local referenda would make us accountable to you. For example, something like fox hunting, decide it locally. Don't like it, change it. So you don't need to trust me that much because politicians in general can't be trusted. Two, at this election, we put country before party. Whoever, whether they were conservative, labor, or in zero cases, Lib Dems, if they were true Brexiteers, we did not put up candidates against them. That's a sign of a party who puts country first, party second. Thirdly, we want to change the democratic system to some system of proportional representation. Because the way it is now, it just doesn't make sense. 
Fourthly, UKIP is a party of real people, not professional politicians. Perish the thought. I'm not a politician. I'm just here pretending to be one. I'm telling you the truth. Speaking from my heart, I haven't made a penny from this, and anything I got, I would give back, if I even took it in the first place. Thank you, Freddie. Uh, this evening. So the first one is on uh, what I would say is probably a, a national issue but also has a big effect uh, on us here uh, in Old Betsy and Sick Up and that is to do with the cuts with uh, austerity measures and, uh, and such like. So rather than just me waffling on, I'll, I'll read you a couple of the questions uh, on this just so you know you, you out there feel like you're being heard. So there's, there's two parts to this really. Let me read you the first bit. There's a little bit of a statement to it. Over 4,000 people have had to use Bexley food banks in the last year. Many of these are struggling because of welfare cuts and benefit changes. Now, how will your party ensure the gap between the rich and the poor does not continue to widen? So how will your party uh, continue or, or even begin to ensure that the gap between the rich and poor doesn't keep uh, getting wider? Um, so let's go on uh, this one. Let's go to Danny. Good stuff, Freddie. Um, the problem with these socialist policies, and I'm, um, I'm unfortunately quoting Margaret Thatcher here, is they have a tendency to increase the gap rather than decrease them by pulling both down and pulling the ones at the bottom even further down. Socialism doesn't work. What would we say? We started off with talking about food banks. Well, um, it is uh, 1.18 million people rely on food banks in this country, and that is utterly shocking. It's a result, generally, of our economy suffering under mismanagement by Lib Lab Con. UKIP hasn't had its chance yet. Um, we would scrap local authority charges because, believe it or not, local authorities, including Bexley, charge the people running the uh, food bank for, for the privilege of so doing. That isn't right. We would also lower the cost of living substantially by making things cheaper and more affordable. That's the way to, ta to tackle this, not by bringing in socialist ideas. Interesting. Shall I answer? I'm more than happy to answer. But uh, you, yeah, why not briefly? Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. We would keep the minimum wage roughly where it is. It simply drives a black economy when you do otherwise. The point is about socialism. It's wonderful, but you always end up running out of other people's money to waste. Okay, so thank, hang on a second. Thank you for answering it uh, very briefly. We appreciate that. Uh, before, we, before we move on. Um, the Laffer Curve. It's well known to economists, and this bit really works. You just raise the tax rates. You lower the amount of tax collected. Tax is meant to be not a punishment. It's not a punishment for working hard or doing things um, perhaps better or perhaps being luckier. Tax is a means which we do need to fund things which need to be funded collectively. We don't do it by punishing people. Read about the Laffer Curve, socialists. You put them up, the rate's up, your tax take goes down Everyone gets poorer except the super rich who aren't interested in your ch hitting corporation tax and other taxes. They have offshore trust funds and they pay nothing. Okay, uh, no point asking UKIP on that because Bexley's free and competent UKIP councillors have voted each and every way and they've supported the Tories. You've supported the Tories. You've supported the Tories. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud. Okay, good stuff. Uh, James, a right to reply, I'm sure. Let's not forget that the reason why savings have had to be made is because of Labour's recession and how we've had to deal with the deficit. It's global. We've heard that before. And, that's, and that clear statement that was left on that letter that said there is no money left. And so that, that is why we have... That is why we okay, have let's... Had uh, sorry, James, to interrupt. Let's let... Listen, let's... We... Thank you for pointing. We're interested in what the candidates want to say. I realise this is... Yeah, well, yeah, we are. that's what we hope, that's what we're given the opportunity to do. So, John. hang on, hang on, hang on. So, hang on. At some point, at some point. But listen, well, that's fine, that's fine. I, I want to, hear, hang on a second, I want to, I want us to be able to hear from the candidate. So let's give James his moment to reply. If you want to come back on it, that's absolutely fine. We will just run out of time. There is only already 40 minutes left, and there are lots of things here I want us to talk about. So if we keep berating everyone... We're not going to get very far. That's no. well, right, hang on. So, Freddie is going to just um, come back on that. Uh, for all my sins, I'm an accountant. 
the 1.9 trillion pounds approximately public sector debt is really not a true and fair figure. It should be about 4 trillion pounds because it must include the accrual as well for unfunded pension liabilities for civil servants who have not yet retired. This is a mind-boggling amount, 4 trillion pounds. We have to clear it. The interest on this is costing us hundreds of thousands of pounds per hour. We can't afford to have a level of debt like this, and under a Labour Party who don't know what the difference between the debt and the deficit is, okay. my gosh, we really do need some education here. Okay, those yeah. who have, thank you, those who have not had a chance to come back, Chimway, um, Danny, and sorry, not Danny, Derek and Drew, any, any further comment before we are going to move on? Anything you'd like to add quickly? No, that's okay. Okay, then let's move on. Let's move on. We're simmering. See if we can bring it to the boil. Uh, with Crossrail, this is a question from someone. With, cross, with Crossrail arriving on our doorstep, what proposals do candidates have to bring improved Transport for London, sorry, Transport for London standard rail services to Sidcup and Bexley? So something about uh, us here in our constituency. How can we see improvements in the transport system to this area where we live? Lots of people commute. Lots of people go up into the city, not everyone of course, but uh, how can we see, what would your party want to do to help us in Old Bexley and Sidcup in terms of uh, transport? Um, James um, did a fairly good answer there, but he forgot to mention the, the new concourse at London Bridge Station. It's the key interchange after all for, station, for all the Bexley stations. However, let's be controversial for once. We're missing the elephant in the room. There are too many people in this country. Oh, right. We have oh, 30 right. times in oh. England the popul... I know Max isn't very good with your sort. You have Diane Abbott to do it. Yes, there are 30 times the population density of Somalia. There are too many people here. Too many people, hence transport problems. The two things are connected. It is ironic the Green Party connive with this. Sad, though. Too many people, too much pollution, transport problems. Okay. Easy solution. And finally, uh, Drew. Okay, so uh, like Danny, I also uh, have the pleasure of being a southeastern uh, commuter. Um, you may have noticed today it rained, which caused complete chaos. Um, and a branch on the line uh, made me an hour late for work. So that was a great start to my Wrong day. sort of rain. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the answer, the question asked... Um, in response to um, Crossrail coming, will um, we um, take South East under TFL? And actually, the Lib Dem policy is that we would. So um, when the franchise runs out, um, Liberal Democrat policy is that we would um, basically have TFL run the suburban lines. Thank you very much. OK, uh, Danny, you wanted to come back on a point there. Yeah, two um, quick points. I mean, Freddie, we know that you're not from the area. We know you've got no real, real interest in the area and you've been parachuted in. People in Bexley suffer with transport. I so can you, myself, so can you answer the question on transport and address that? Because actually, you, there, there, there was no vision there. There was no vision for Bexley. Can you answer the question on transport? Because I think people want to know your views. I'm willing to bet you can. I, I already... I already gave them um, the, the new concourse at London Bridge Station is, is, is uh, key. Um, they, should, they should do something towards um, clearing the congestion, but the problem isn't a Bexley one. This isn't a matter of nimbyism. The problem is national. Look, England is, like it or not, the fourth most densely populated large country in the world. We don't want to have tiddlers like Monaco confusing the uh, statistics or the Vatican City. Only Bangladesh, Taiwan and South Korea have a higher population density than England. This is... This is why transportation is a problem. You can continue to localize it as much as you want. You're a councillor. This is not a council election. Okay. This is a parliamentary election for Westminster. We need to find okay. national solutions. Would anyone else Danny. like to come back at all on this topic? <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. Uh, we'll move on. We'll move on. So th this question uh, has come from someone, and it is about uh, the police. It's quite a straightforward question, and we're going to go to uh, Freddie first. Uh, it says this simply, there are 19,000 fewer police in England and Wales since 2010. What would you and your party do about it? 
immediately recruit another 10,000. This is ridiculous. This is one of the greatest failings of the Conservative Party and the combined Conservative Liberal Coalition. Under Theresa May's watch, it's 50,000 we have lost from the police and the armed services. This is absolutely unconscionable. And if there's the biggest difference, single difference I have with the gentleman sitting to my left in more senses than one, it's this one. How dare they have done this and make us... Un the first duty of a government is to keep its people safe, not your crackpot socialist ideas. They don't matter at all. Keep them safe and keep them alive, and we need police, and we need armed forces. As to Labour, sheesh. What are we going to get? All Lib Dems. We're going to get nukes, which aren't nukes, and everyone knows they're not nukes, but the submarines will still go out, or not nukes at all with our submarines. Now, this is just crazy stuff. It's out of the madhouse. It makes the Conservatives look sensible. Come on, you can do better, Labour. Okay. Well, fortunately... I don't. Uh, Danny, you're next. Um, well, um, I mean, I don't remember the question being about nuclear bombs, um, so getting back to the police force... No answer. Freddie, we... Uh, no answer. Very, brief, very briefly, it may be uh, true in physics that uh, red plus blue makes purple, but here it just makes me confused. Crime is falling, James, largely because people don't bother to report stuff to the police anymore. True. Simply true. Um, as to Labour, I'll take no lectures from them either, their magic money tree with Diane Abbott paying them 30 quid a year. Um, it's not possible. Where's your money coming from? Okay. Anyone else would like to come back to Freddie on that point? You look like you were heading to the mic. Drew or Danny? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if we, anyone else, any candidates want to come back on this? Danny, do you want to make another final Yeah, no, I mean... Point? Okay, let's listen to Danny. Labor, because the Labour cost Hang on a sec, you, Freddie. Hang on a sec, you've had your moment. So we want to hear from Danny. Go on, Danny. We want to hear from Danny. Go on, Danny. So, um, first of all... Diane Abbott isn't on the ballot paper here. I am on the ballot pa pa paper. Jeremy Corbyn's not on the ballot paper. I am on the ba ballot paper. So let's talk about me as a candidate and local Whoa. issues here. We have, there's the Labour Party manifesto. The Labour Party manifesto has been costed and we've released those costings. The Conservative Party have said that they'll release those costings after the election. We asked the Conservative Party, let's both submit our manifestos to the Independent Office of Budget Responsibility and we'll let them look at it and we'll let them come to a conclusion. The Conservative Party said no. So I'll take no lectures from anyone on an uncosted manifesto. We're the only party to put it out there with the full costings. There's a separate document and it's out there. Okay. Well, on our estimates, around 58 billion is uncosted. And what that will mean is more taxation, more borrowing, not actually dealing, not dealing with the deficit. And I think as a government, we have shown how we have reduced the deficit by two thirds. <laughs> that is the reality. And therefore, it is that way of how you grow your tax receipts to actually ensure that you can then spend on your NHS, on your public services. That is what we have done as a government. And unfortunately, it is about Labour's magic money tree that they do think the money will grow on trees. The reality is it doesn't, and it will lead, if they were elected, to more debt, more taxation. And, and again, when we look at the record of those who would be taking those high offices, I think people need to scrutinise that very, very carefully in making their decision as to whether they would have confidence in keeping our country safe. Okay. For, for someone who doesn't believe in the magic money tree, for someone who doesn't believe in the magic money tree, then... Uh, education, let me read this to you. Uh, so the schools in this constituency as a whole are struggling to cope with current funding levels. What will you do to ensure that our schools here are kept at a standard we would all be proud of. Thank you. Uh, Freddie. Um, I too was a teacher and that's one of the most rewarding times of my life because you, you help people and young people are our future. Um, UKIP is completely committed to putting more money into education and also freeing teachers from an absolutely outrageous amount of paperwork they have to do. Ofsted inspections are increasingly about the quality of the paperwork, not the quality of the teaching. This is absurd. This is, a, this is not what it was designed to be. Teachers are spending, uh, I've got some horrific figures here, 90% of teachers, apparently, 
and this is not Bexley specific, again, this problem is national, um, have considered leaving the profession in the last two years. That tells you everything you need to know. Now, we need to fix this problem, and we fix it by making education more important. We, we also need to increase social mobility, and the best way to do this is to encourage grammar schools. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, lovely. I can imagine. Thank you, everyone. Some people want to come back, Freddie? Do you want to go first? Um, yes, a couple of things. Uh, one, corporation tax has just been mentioned. Danny, do you know how little corporation tax is collected? And all you do if you raise the rate is companies just migrate somewhere else. It's, it's much easier migrating a company than migrating a person. Secondly, perhaps something that the Labour Party should consider is ending the left-wing indoctrination of children in schools. This is a major problem. This is a problem akin to child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Schools are places to teach proper subjects not politics to people who have not got enough life experience. I speak as a teacher. I would never dream of doing it, nor was it ever done to me. Students right now in schools who are being subjected to this should have legal rights when they grow up to take action against the teachers and schools. This is me speaking from my heart, not yet UKIP policy, but hopefully we're working on it, to correct this ridiculous okay. bias. James? What Freddie said, because I never came here tonight to talk down te te teachers. We're in a school, right? Our teachers do a vital job teaching our young people to become model citizens. I mean, I've, it's this this lunacy you talk about left wing, left wing in you know, you know, in, 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 it's, it's absolutely ru rubbish. I know myself and Derek have both signed up to the to the school cuts pledge, and if you will let me as your Labour MP, I'll make sure that we Sorry, don't Danny. have this. Let, let, he, let him. Been a teacher, clearly. Thank you. Let him speak and let him finish. Thank you. Go on, Danny. Thanks. I mean, you know, the um, UKIP councillors in the room can shout as much as that they want, but let's, let's face it, we know this is happening. We've been told this at the council, um, and, you know, um, if James wants to dispute those, the, 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 those figures, then that's fine, but it's out there. It's true. It's going to happen. Um, our teachers deserve the money that they need to teach our young people to make a model citizens for our country. Thank you. My or in immediately. No, well, we, I was coming to Drew. Drew, do you want to go first? Because uh, 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 James asked uh, what I hope was a rhetorical question, because you're supposed to be a politician and I'm not. You asked where did Labour get the figures, like most of other Labour figures, and I'm too polite to say exactly where from. Okay, yeah. Drew. <laughs> um, as a gay student growing up, and um, as a t gay teenager, it was not a comfortable place to be, because it couldn't be talked about. I even now work in a school where there are kids with gay parents, where there are people who, um, who find themselves and come out at a young age. That is a much more comfortable, safer, more productive, better education, yeah, yeah. and a better educational environment than I ever had. And it's a positive that that's changed. Thank you, Jim. Left-wing and right-wing has to do with economics, and certainly not with sexuality. I um, think the uh, I'll read you this question that has come to us. It says this, mental health seems to be an area which has been forgotten about within funding for the health service. What and how would your party fund out of our support for those with mental health issues, as it, as it often at those points when there are no other services and support available when people most need it? So we could talk for hours about the National Health Service, the NHS, but here is a specific question from someone in this constituency about the whole area of uh, mental health. Thank you. And uh, finally, uh, Freddie. Um, yes, here there's, I think, a broad consensus between the candidates. Um, the issues of mental health have been ignored for far too long within our health service. Um, I adopt a holistic approach, as in we are one organism. Uh, trying to separate the mental from the physical is ridiculous. Um, it should never have been done. When we look back at it with hindsight, we probably ask, why did we ever uh, make such a mistake? This is we collectively. Um, things which have not been mentioned, well, 40% of all a &E admissions are believed to be mental health related. This includes alcohol and drug abuse, which can be seen to be an adjunct of that. 
Um, Cyberbullying is a big issue. Young people need to know there are people out there. UKIP is committed, by the way, to 500 million per year, funding 6,000 clinical psychologists, which would take the pressure off A&E as well. Another important aspect, and I'm afraid it's, this is going to get a little bit political, but only a little bit, Danny, um, is armed forces personnel. Thanks to that uh, yet another Labour leader who I suspect Danny will wish to uh, disavow, Tony Blair, whose surname may be misspelt, we have lots of armed forces personnel badly traumatized, irreparably in some cases, and they've been ignored, um, who need mental health help. They've seen awful things thanks to illegal wars our country has fought, where it should never have been. Okay. War crimes trials. Thank you. That'd so, uh, anyone would like to come back on any of those comments, Danny? No? No. Tony no? Blair defense, come on then. Oh, no, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. Well. Shh. doesn't have to. Okay. Thank you uh, for all of those things. Now, we're gonna, we've got time for one more question, I believe. I'm just looking for a nod of approval from the back that we're not running out of time. There is no nod, so we'll carry on. Um, the EU time directive doesn't... Okay. Apply. So, we're going to look at the final one, and it would be pertinent to, and um, obviously bearing in mind the sensitivities around this, but there's a question here uh, around uh, the whole thing of terrorism, which has obviously been in the, in the news. And we have talked a little bit about already about policing and uh, some of the response to that. So uh, I'll read you what's been written, and uh, then I'll open it uh, for the candidates to give an answer. So it says this, the question that's been uh, given to us. Uh, it has been established that some mosques are supporting hate preachers. These are radicalizing young Muslims. What action would you take uh, to deal with this? So we have discussed the, the policing thing, although I'm sure that is part of what you might um, discuss. But what would we uh, do about... Uh, some of the things that we've seen on our streets, some of the scary stuff that's uh, happened um, over the uh, past few weeks. So we're going to start. Oh, we'll go back to Freddie. I n I'm so shocked that this question has even come up. Um, Wahhabi and Salafist influences within Islam have to be absolutely combated. They are our enemies. Anyone not realizing this is living in denial. They're also the enemies of every good Muslim. They would radicalize to a degree which would make it impossible for life to continue as we know it in Britain. Currently, they only have to get lucky once, and they'd only have to know half the physics that I know to do a lot more damage than flying planes into buildings. If you consider this to be alarmism, then you're guilty of what LibLabCon have done, and they're all guilty in this. For 30 years, we have pursued policies which have resulted in this happening. Shame on them for not seeing it coming. How do we fix it, however? We're here now. We tackle it. Even if internment, a word which has negative connotations to me, horrible connotations to me, but even that might have to remain on the table. As okay. to deportations, you bet. Get the okay, terrorist thank creatures you. out we or will in jail. Come back. You have a moment to reply in a minute, James. I think we do need to be tougher in relation to extremism. I think that that has been tolerated in so many different ways for too long. Um, and it's about coming together as a community. Thank you. OK, finally, um, Derek, and then we'll come to you, Freddie. OK, thank you. Uh, Freddie, you want to come back on, on something? Several, several things. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to Derek for not blaming this on global warming, the increase in terrorism, because many left-wing organisations have. Bizarre it sounds, but I'm not joking. The problem is extremely serious. The problem threatens our very existence and way of life permanently and irreversibly. I'd have been much more convinced if Danny had blamed his own party's policies, which we, we are seeing the fruits of his party's policies starting especially in 1997 with the ascent of Blair. However, James is not entirely without blame. He was indeed, I believe, Security and Immigration Minister under Secretary of State for Crime and Security for virtually all the time since 2011. Now, alas, um, how, can I, how can I say this? Where were you looking when all this happened, when this was growing? Um, where were you looking at the great friends of the Conservative Party in the Saudi government who are behind a lot of this? 
go and ask Muslims in many of the Shia countries where real problems are coming from, and they will say Saudi Arabia without a minute's without a minute's hesitation. Saudi, ask them how many refugees they have taken in. Th this is one of the richest and least densely populated okay. countries in the world. Shame on the conservatives for not sorting this out. You were in power. It was your watch. Fix the problem. Okay, anyone else want to make further comment before we... I'm going to wrap up. the second stage. <laughs> not quite. Uh, before we're going to mo move on. Okay, good stuff. Okay, we, we want to say thank you for all of your questions uh, tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to give each uh, candidate uh, a final minute and uh, we'll cut them off at the end of that minute uh, just to give you their closing statement and a reason why in 48 hours' time as you wander around to the polling station uh, that you should vote for them to represent us in Old Bexley and Sig Cup and why their uh, party should be influencers uh, in our country. Don't let the Conservatives and James Brokenshire hold our community back. Let's build a Britain that works for the many and not just a few. Thank you. Danny? Okay, Freddie. Um, a vote for Danny is a vote for Corbyn. Um, over the coming years, we must fight growing, implacable Islamist violence, a retreat to the discredited dogmas and mantras of socialism, and an Orwellian and anti-democratic global con consortium. UKIP is the only party with the brains, plans, and determination. <laughs> Yes, indeed, to keep these forces at bay, to reinstate enlightened, European, democratic, Judeo-Christian, and I speak here as an atheist, freedoms and principles which remain mankind's greatest engine for delivering prosperity and happiness. Ignore virtue signaling politically correct platitudes from my mainstream opponents, Chinwe's fine, the crazy polic policies of whose racist parties have got us into this mess. I don't believe Bulgarians good, Indians bad, Romanians good, New Zealanders bad. Okay. That's just rubbish. Thank you. Vote UKIP. Freddie.